Good afternoon, Poké Sports, and welcome to another VGC Battle Stadium Series 8 video bringing you Necrozma Dawn Wings. Now, earlier this week, Mike did upload a video with Necrozma Dawn Wings, but hey, this is my team now. I decided to do things a little bit differently with a complete Trick Room Necrozma Dawn Wings team. Um, so here we have, you know, Dawn Wings with Power Herb and Meteor Beam and Trick Room. This is going to be our Trick Room setter alongside our best friend, Female and DD here with Culpa Berry. I'm running min speed simply because that means that I will always almost be able to get the the terrain up last, which is very really important because I do have the expanding force on a Krasma. Uh Moving on, we also do have the Torkoal here, and guess who's next to the Torkoal? Can anyone guess? Can anyone guess? It's Venusaur. We have a little bit of a uh, Venusaur Sun Trick Room team type thing. Uh, we'll see how well it does. I'm kind of hyped to use it because I feel like it's been a while since we've got to see it in action. And also, our best friend Urshifu alongside our second best friend Glacier with Weakness Policy to be our Trick Room Sweeper. And there's the team. Super straightforward, super nice, super great to ladder with. So I would definitely recommend grabbing this one at the end of the video. And also, can we just admire Necrozma's design when it's Dawn Wings? I don't know. I'm just looking at this Pokemon and I just think it looks so cool. And maybe it's the color scheme, the whole blue, black, red, white thing that it's got going on. I like it. Anyway, I'm recording this during the day. So you're actually seeing a little bit of my background. Uh, that, that's my cat. You guys see my cat? Oh, no, you don't see it now. Mitchy. Oh, look at those eyes. You see that? Mitchy. Come on, lift your head. <laughs> Those eyes are terrifying. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get on to this battle. Oh boy, Kyurem Black versus Necrozma Dawn Wings. Okay, this is kind of scary. Because I do see that Pheromosa and I got no fake out to save me. <laughs> um, but hey, I'm, we got Trick Room, right? And our whole team is kind of slow except for that Torkoal. So I think we'll be somewhat okay. I think we'll definitely be okay. We have two like second terrain setters on the field as well, which is really nice. So, I think we're not going to take any risks here. We're going to definitely try to get this Trick Room up 120%. So, let's go for Necrozma. Let's go for the Indeed. Let's bring the Torkoal. And do we just go for the Glacier here? I don't know if I want to bring Venusaur. Simply because Venusaur doesn't really help us against their team. Especially the Torkoal. Torkoal threatens us a lot. But at least Glacier will be able to get the Weakness Policy off Dynamax. And even do some pretty scary things. So, that's why I'm leaning towards Glacier a little bit more. Yeah, let's do that. We also have to keep in, keep in mind my opponent, Shockwave, can also set up their own Trick Room. Or even undo our, our Trick Room. Both of which, very bad. Also looking at their team, maybe this would have been an Urshifu game because they have an Ice type, they have a Dark type, and they have a Psyche type, and they have a Normal type. Oh well. <laughs> it's too late now. We are locked in. Anyway, uh, Urshifu would have not enjoyed the Trick Room side of the team, so did my opponent run out of time? If my opponent leads Dragapult and Faramosa, they did in fact run out of time. I mean, hey, it happens to the best of us, right? Dra they ran out of time. Oh, feels bad. So sad. I do not pity them at all. Okay, Necrozma and Ndidi lead. This is the easiest, peasiest trick room of our lives. I am so happy. Um, don't know what Pheromos is going to do here. But I think I just take the turn of trick room and follow me. We're not going to, we're not going to overthink this, right? We're going to go for our bare bones, dead brain play. Because it is honestly our best case scenario. And then we just get expanding force spams after this. My opponent is actually going to Dynamax. Most likely their Dragapult since Pheromosa. I don't think I've ever seen Dynamax in my life. Yeah, definitely the Dragapult here. I'm not too concerned. Most Dragapults can actually carry dark moves now. That'd be the only thing I'm concerned with. But at least I get to throw it into my Cobra Berry and DD. There's the Icy Wind. Why, thank you. Thank you so much. That just helps me. 
<laughs> I am so okay with that. Followed by Max Phantasm. Oh no, you poor thing. Anyway, Chick Room. That turn could honestly not have gone any better. And since they just showed me that they want to do that to me, we're going to Moon Guys Beam their face. Actually, let's just Expanding Force for now. Just so we get some damage off on the Pharaoh. And let's keep going for Follow Me. Because I feel like if we keep spamming Follow Me, eventually the Dragapult is just not going to do anything to us. Like, yeah, Dragapult can go for Max Airstreams, but that doesn't help. It can go for Max Darkness. But we still have our Colba Berry. So no matter what, we are going to be in a pretty solid position. And I don't think either one of our Pokemon goes down this turn. Unless maybe a really thick Pheromosa U-turn. That'll ruin my Ndidi for sure. There's the guard. That's kind of okay. My goal here was to deal some damage to this Pheromosa anyway. Because this now opens up the game for me a little bit. I can go for Expanding Force next turn with Ndidi. Knock out the Pharaoh. Because the Sash is still intact. And let's see what Pheromosa is doing here. Close combat. Okay. It's going to be the nice neutral close combat. Well, like I said, I can go for the Expanding Force with the Ndidi this turn around. This time around. I could go for a Moongeist Beam. Onto the Dragapult. But also Meteor Beam here. Let's play it a little bit slower. Yeah, let's Meteor Beam the Pheromosa. Actually. How about I just go for expanding? Because the thing is, I want I want special attack, right? But I also don't want to burn too many turns of Trick Room. I want to Meteor Beam Pheromosa and then go for... Go for the Follow Me again. We'll play this a little slower. I mean, our Trick Room Cider still has full health, right? We still have prison armor and everything that we need. And we're just slowly whittling away their Pokemon here. Even if I even if I miss this, I get the plus two, which is kind of what I mean, plus one, which is kind of what I want. I do connect with the Meteor Beam. I will be able to take out the Fermosa, which means my Indeedy should. Uh, Live to fight another day. That's also the last turn of their Dragapult Dynamax here, too. Wyrmwind. Okay, indeed he goes down. But I now get the free switch that I wanted into the Glacier. Because Glacier demaxing is a lot more threatening. Especially against this uh, Dragapult here. <laughs> Thing is, did my opponent... Uh, oh, my opponent did not bring Torkoal. Because I don't think Torkoal was in their top four. That's right, they got timed out. Okay. I'll take that for sure. <laughs> All right, here comes a Glacier. Now, do we Dynamax Glacier or do we Dynamax Kyurem? That is a question, right? I think if I'm being responsible, the better Dynamax is Glacier. But since this is the Necrozma video, I think it's time. Mindstorm the Curum. Icicle Crash the Dragapult. It's time to Dynamax on Necrozma. This was never intended. Not in even a billion years. This Necrozma was meant to be a Trick Room Setter and an Expanding Vorse Spammer. <laughs> but we are in such a good position that we might as well have a little bit of fun. Also, who knows what that Cura Black could do, right? I don't think it could do much of this game. In fact, I think it's going to get obliterated in about a second here. Hey, I'm down. Now that our opponent's Dynamax is over, we only got a couple of turns left in Trick Room. We're actually going to lose Trick Room during our Dynamax. Which is not the greatest thing in the world, but... We're just going to have to deal a little bit. Glacier firing off an Ice Cream Crash. Going to connect into the Drag Pulse. Should be a clean KO here. Beautiful. And now we got the Necrozma. Let's see how much damage this Mindstorm at plus one can do. Ooh, this team is kind of gross. Mindstorm into the Terra Volt. Kiram. Deleted. Big yikes. 
Okay, I, I don't think there's much left for my opponent here. Like, <laughs> we are, we are kind of set here. Even if our trick room runs out, we got our Necrozma plus one, and we got the Glacier plus one. See, look at Necrozma's hands. It, they're like this. Like, I guess it's, yeah, it's Necrozma's hands. It's like, they're carrying us to victory. <laughs> you you don't see us right now, but we're on that palm, we're on those palms. And they're carrying us to victory. Shockwave? Shockwave, you there? Hello? Okay, sent the Lele. There he is. Got one more turn of the good old Dynamax. Let's go for the Phantasm. Go for the Icicle Crash, and let's call it a game. Shockwave's making his weight. <laughs> Hello? Thank you. Battle's canceled. GG. <laughs> okay. Um, new fan of Necrozma. What was that Pokemon? On to the next one. Zation Lapdog Team. Oh boy. Oh goody old boy. <sighs> Very strong team my opponent has, but they kind of do fall to Trick Room except for their Stacka. Their stack is going to be very, 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 very difficult to tolerate. But hey, we got the Urshifu. We can't ignore that. We also do have Earth Power or High Horsepower on our Glacier and Earth Power on our Torkoal. That Venusaur is so out of place. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and lead with our Trick Room lead. Because I do think it's not bad at all. I could also lead with Venacol right off the bat. But that doesn't really assist us too much. I do want the Torkoal just for the Zacian, if anything. Um, do we do the Urshi? They have Intimidate Spams. That's why I'm kind of reluctant to bring the Glacier. Does my Venusaur have Earth Power? I do not recall. It does, but that's only really good if I come in like late game. Because I'm going to get the Trick Room set up immediately. I might go for Urshi. No, I'm going to Glacier. Oh, we got to turn our brains off sometimes. Guys, how about those Brilliant Diamonds and Shining Pearl remakes? Along with Pokemon Legends Arceus. Um, I got to say, I don't... I'm kind of worried. I don't know what game VGC is going to be played on. I'm assuming it's DPP or Diamond Pearl. Uh, whatever it is. BDSP? I guess it's going to be on those. Um, simply because, you know, the battles look pretty much identical to Sword and Shield battles. Um, could also be on Sword and Shield. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think. I think it's definitely not going to be, be on Legends, because that, that game's only coming out in 2022, and I think the battle styles are a little bit different, so, yeah. So we'll see. I think it's definitely between Sword and Shield and Diamond Pearl. My bet's on Diamond Pearl, but hey, who knows? Who knows? Not a fan of the... The chibi art. I, I love the fact that it's a traditional remake. I'm just not a fan of the, the chibi art. I wish they would have made them like less block character -y. Or made them look a little bit like, uh, what was it? Link's Awakening. I love that block art. Anyway, I got to pick moves. I think we just follow me in Trick Room here, though. I think we are not going to think about this too much. Just follow me, Trick Room, followed by Expanding Force next turn. Going to swap out the Venu. Even better, you can't put anything to sleep. And going into the Incineroar. Here's the thing. And this is why Necrozma is dumb. Because of this Power Herb Meteor Beam thing. Incin doesn't threaten me at all. I just go for Meteor Beam on Incineroars. Goes for the Heat Wave? Whatever. That's the only plan to stop my Trick Room. It's not happening. <laughs> All right, let's bring out our... It, it definitely looks like my opponent was predicting a Venical lead. So, uh, it's a little sad for them. But anyway, let's go again for... Let's go for the Expanding Force this time around. 
Because I feel like we're going to Oko this Ensign. Are we, though? Let's let's play this a little bit cautiously. I'm not too familiar with Necrozma damage output, but I know Incineroars can carry us all best. They can get very disgustingly tanky. So let's let's clap a little bit for our Necrozma. Because we're going for the gear. Oh. Incin outspeeds my Necrozma. I'm quiet. Negative nature. So it's a great thing that I went for helping hand here. Uh, they're going to make me down to negative one, but I'm going to go right back up to neutral. Which is more than I need. How is this Incineroar? I know I'm not the slowest thing in the world. I'm like 77, but this Incin should, should, shouldn't be outspeeding me. <laughs> Whatever. I guess it's just a funky Incin spread. Meteor Beam is going to connect. So much damage does to Incin. Disgusting. Okay, so apparently I didn't need the Helping Hand. So that's good information to have. I needed it there, but had I been in a normal situation where the Incin wasn't going to go for a Snarl, I wouldn't have needed it. Anyway, Zapdos is going to leave. We're still holding our Dynamax here. I'm not going to pull the trigger until my opponent does. That's such a cool jacket on my opponent, too. Look at them eyes. Zation coming out. Hello, my friend. Followed by probably just going to be a Venusaur, right? Or could they could go right back into Zapdos for all I know. It's got to be one or the other. It is going to be the Venusaur. Um, hear me out. I'm actually more concerned with the Venusaur than I am the Zacian. So I think I just double dip on Expanding Force here. And then just have my Torkoal deal with the Zacian later. If they get a KO here, they actually end up helping me. They're gonna Dynamax the Venusaur. Double Expanding Force, though. Oh, there's Michi. There she is. She put her head up. Double Expanding Force, right? This should be able to take it out. But like I said before, with the Ensign, the Venusaur could also be a Sol Vested. Definitely not a Sol Vested. <laughs> but anyway, this should actually clean off the Venusaur. Come on, NDD. Ooh. Almost. So close. Wow. There's the Vine Lash. Big ouch. Something's going down. Never mind. Across was dumb. But I'm pretty sure the Zacian's going to be able to clean it up. But like I said, if something goes down here, we just get the free switch in on Torkoal. While we still have a bunch of turns of Trick Room left. That is absolutely A-OK. -okay. Because you know what comes next, folks? That is definitely going to be a Helping Hand boosted Eruption. Mm, how many turns of Trick Room do I have left, though? I actually don't have a secondary set on this, on this team, which could be bad. I hope I have enough turns left of Trick Room. I feel like I should. Because they could definitely go for a double protect and call it there. No, I definitely have at least two. Yeah, I have Trick Room for two more turns. So they can protect all they want. They can't hide, though. So I'm going to go for the Torkoal Helping Hand, followed by Eruption. That should be a clean double KO. Ooh, no protect on... Oh, never mind. Helping Hand always goes first. Haha. <laughs> Where's the Protects? There has to be at least one. Zacian Protect. There it is. Are they going to sack off the Venu though? Double Protect. Like I said, they have to double double Protect in order to stand a chance after this. But after this turn, I am going to have to fight the Zapdos without... Ooh, that's going to weaken my Eruption a little bit, but I still think that'll do it. They're banking on... Oh, they were banking on KO and the Ndidi. I mean, it, it was close. But not close enough. Let's go for the helping hand. Go for this eruption. I'm still going to go for the eruption because I think it still does more damage than Heat Wave and it doesn't miss. Which is all I really need right now. Here's the question. If they get this double protect, they win. Good. Okay. That was the important one. They got the double max guard. That's not great, but it's not the end of the world. I needed the Zacian to go down, if anything. Because the Zacian can one-shot my Glacier super easily. But at least I'm, like, stalling out the Venusaur's Dynamax. I think the Dynamax is actually up right there. We still have our Dynamax intact. DD will go down there. Makes a lot of sense. Um, here's praying that uh, Venusaur doesn't have Weather Ball. Because 
If my opponent wants to double down into my glacier that last turn with like a heat wave weather ball in the sun, I might be in danger. <laughs> but anyway, let's go into glacier. This is gonna be a Dynamax here. Um, question is, who do we care about? Who are we threatened by? Zapdos or Venu? Venu could also still carry. Guys, I'm going to protect one turn. Just in case they go for... Sleep Powder. I don't want them to sleep out on my Dynamax, so I'm just going to kind of scout for Sleep Powder real quick. Earth Power, never mind. Um, well, my Torkoal. Okay, so I think I was worried for no reason. And then there's a Heat Wave. The fact that they didn't go for Weather Ball there might mean they're not too afraid. Or might mean they don't have it. Um, I'm definitely Dynamaxing here, though. I'm definitely Dynamaxing, Hailstorming, going for the Zapdos. I'm going to try to get the Clean KO on Zapdos, set up the the, the Hail for us, too. Um, I hope that one decision to protect and check and scout isn't going to cost us the game. Um, but at the very least, I thought it was a good decision. Because if they landed a Sleep Powder on my Glacier there, I would have just lost. But they miss. Oh my god. It was not a bad decision. You see, guys? It was not a bad decision. Holy. Oh. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Anyway, I'm about to have a plus three uh, Glacier. And the fact that I went for the Zapdos is super big, too. Because I think the Zapdos just took it, took it KO'd me. Almost. I mean, I guess I would have changed the weather. So I wouldn't have gotten the damage boost. Um... Now my best play is to protect, I think. Just have Venusaur take a little bit of chip damage from the hail. Oh, no, it's healing. Is it Black Sludge? Yeah. Okay, never mind. I guess protecting doesn't make a difference then. Um. Yeah, I just Hailstorm. I just Hailstorm again. That's why you don't use Sleep Powder. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That's gotta feel so bad. Um, wow. Um, I don't feel guilty at all. <laughs> uh, I'd say GG, but that was very, very much in my favor in terms of like hacks. So I'm sorry about that. But anyway, GG out of courtesy. Yo, what up, Brad? Brad has a bunch of Pokemon weak to ghost. Cool. Um, but he has one scary dark type that isn't weak to ghost. Anyway, we could just bring the glacier and deal with it, so I'm not too worried. Um, but here's the thing. It all comes back to the meteor beam. Like, every threat that Necrozma has, like, all the relevant dark types are either fire or flying. Meteor beam hits both fire and flying. So problem solved, right? So I'm kind of okay with this. Just go with the Ndidi, go with the Necrozma. Um, I'm definitely feeling glacier, and I think... This might be an Urshifu game, simply because of how many dark weaknesses are on that team. And I don't think I really need Torkoal too much. I mean, Torkoal would also help with the uh, the Glacier, but I mean, so would Urshifu. They both equally help. Just because I brought the Torkoal to every single game here, just because we encountered ourselves in a late game, untrick roomed situation in the last game, I think the decision is... That's a cool... You could just have nothing as your background... I didn't know that. <laughs> but yeah, because of that situation, we're going to go for our late game Urshifu. Lapras plus Mimikyu. Okay, Mimikyu is definitely going to want to set up the, um, the trick room there. I'm going to want to double target the Mimikyu if I can. Situations like this, I actually would have preferred... Could also trick room the trick room, but they're definitely gonna go for trick room and then set up an expanding force. Screw it. I, like the worst case scenario, I get some damage off on the Lapras. Just double expanding force here. Um, the problem is my Indeedy is I think gonna go before my 
my Necrozma, which is bad for this situation, but isn't bad for other situations. Just the fact that I would want the Ndidi not doing the damage. I want the Ndidi snapping its neck and then the Necrozma doing the actual damage damage. But hey, oh well. Oh, that that is what's happening. Never mind. I did that on purpose, I swear. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Because this is going to be so terrifying. Problem solved. That was a crit. Um, I That might have mattered, though. Hax is on our side. What can I say, guys? They're going to get their resonance up. But we're going to get a trick room up next turn. Oh, and they went for the NDD. Oh, you're just making this too easy on me. Uh, now they get the free swap into... It's a Moltres, right? But I have Prison Armor. I feel like it could take a Fiery Wrath, especially if it's unboosted. Yo, guys, real talk. You ready for this? I think we're doing this. Meteor Beam. Moltres, helping hand boost. We're not even setting up Trick Room yet. Oh, they do have- oh, they have the Resonance up, though. But at least they can't Dynamax Moltres, right? This could end poorly. Okay, Fire Wrath happens first. Gonna pop our Culver Berry. Big ouch, but we live. The plus one plus helping hand should break through the Moltres. I mean, Moltres is especially defensive. And they are behind resonance. How much faith do I have in you, Necrozma? I have so much faith! What the heck was that? <laughs> I am... I am... I'm in awe right now by what is happening in front of me. They stopped my trick room. Fine. Honestly, fine. We got Urshifu. They got rid of Necrozma, but honestly, I am not even salty about it. Now we just go hard into Urshi. What do they got left in the back? Like a, uh, Calyrex. Perfect. <laughs> we got Calyrex. Uh, we gave him Mindstorm, which is kind of bad, but thankfully it doesn't matter too much. We're going to show them the Urshi. I think we're just going to fire off some attacks into the Calyrex. So we're going to Wicked Blow the Calyrex, and we're going to Helping Hand boost this Wicked Blow. We're going to try to do so much dumb damage, they can't even protect it. Because Urshifu is dumb. We have so many dumb Pokemon on the field right now. Helping Hand boosted Urshifu Wicked Blow into the Calyrex. Is it a Sayonara? It's a Sayonara. Doesn't even matter. Oh my goodness. You set up a Resonance? I didn't notice, because this team is so much damage. Alright, anyway, Geyser is probably going to get our Urshifu down to, like, 1 HP. But, oh well. We still got one good attack in us. Now, we could go for Wicked Blow onto this Lapras. But, on the off chance it's Shell Armor, I know they almost never are anymore. They were last season because Urshifu was so popular. But since Kyogre is so popular, I think they all kind of rotated on to, to Water Absorb. We're going to go for the Close Combat. And we're going to Helping Hand boost this Close Combat. We're going to hopefully end the game there. Let's clap for our Ishifu. And let's take out this Lapras. G. G. I honestly, guys, if you guys didn't really like this video, then I highly encourage you to do so. Um, this is probably my favorite team that I've played on the channel so far. I, I've had nothing but fun. I've even had, like... A couple of games offline where I just got random sweeps and I ended up not even giving them to Berm because they were just sweeps and sweeps aren't that entertaining to watch. But like, <laughs> I don't know, man. This team has something. Anyway, let's get you guys this rental code. And here is the Necrozma Dawn Wings team. Trick Room team, that is. The Series 8 Trick Room team. Honestly, probably one of the best Trick Room teams that I think exists right now. Um, I know Trick Room kind of did see a little bit of a fallout ever since the, the new legendaries got introduced into the metagame and like the metagame started to develop and then just had new and new ways of uh, 
countering Trick Room, but I, I think that I'm at the point where I can say this is probably as good as Trick Room's gonna get. I love Necrozma, and I have absolutely no doubts in it, and I will always trust it with everything that I've ever done. We have Indeedy here, just great follow me support, great uh, redirection support, great Psychic Surge user, pairs very well with Necrozma, has that big gigantic dark weakness though, which is why we have the Urshifu here with the four times resistance to dark, and why we also do have a Venus, uh, Venusaur and a Torkoal, so we have a secondary mode that isn't just so reliant on Sun. If you look at this team, we got three Pokemon, or we got four Pokemon that are really good in um, Trick Room, and you got four Pokemon that are really good outside of Trick Room, technically speaking. Um, so I think this is a great team. Definitely really good team if you're trying to gain a lot of ladder ratings. I'm probably going to end up using this team again sometime in the future just because I've enjoyed this video so much. But anyway, have yourselves a great day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, we're so close to... Uh, 10,000 subscribers, you guys can give that some love, and also keep your eye out for uh, some streams coming later this week. We got uh, me coming, when is this video going up? Monday? We got me coming out tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then Mike later on in the week on Friday. Anyway, I'm Kevin Swoggy Sports, a great night. Peace out.